Well, hey there, Dr. Harry Kreitas again from the Medicine Revive podcast and blog, and welcome back. Welcome back to another great episode. So this week's Ask Me Thursdays or Thursdays Thoughts will be a continuation of what we talked about last week, which was how to be a great, great mentor. Today, we're going to talk about the other side of it, how to be a superstar mentee. And as I said last week, there are two sides to this. It's a two-way street. It is a very active process for both the mentor and the mentee. But today we're going to be focusing how to be a superstar mentee because this is the season where most mentor-mentee relationships begin during the months of July and August, at least here in the U.S. So what's the first step in becoming a superstar mentee? Well, the first step is no different than the first step as it was for the mentor, is you must sit down and have very clear goals and expectations set up by you and your mentor. They both have to be somewhat aligned because if your mentor has certain expectations of this professional relationship and you have one set of ideas of how this professional relationship has to be and they're different, it is going to be a recipe for disaster. So this is a really good time to sit down with your mentor and have that conversation. And this will probably be one of your longest meetings that you have with your mentor is this initial meeting on setting very clear expectations. What are the expectations you want to get out of this relationship? And more importantly is how can how can the mentor help you with achieve those, those goals and expectations? And again, it's a two-way street and be open to the advice um, and uh, criticisms perhaps of your mentor, but we have to set up these clear expectations first. That's That's incredibly important. The second thing I would say that's important in how to be a superstar mentee is you have to invest in yourself first. This is actually a common theme in Medicine Revive is investing in yourself first. It goes through so many aspects of medicine as it relates to your well-being, as it relates to your professional advancement, as it relates to your burnout, which is what I don't want any of us to go through. And I want to give you those tools to help you achieve the wellness and the goals that you want. So investing in yourself first is so important, especially as it relates to being a great physician or a great nurse but also as a great mentee, a superstar mentee is invest yourself first. Because if your mentor sees that you are investing in yourself, that relationship is going to go far, far, far longer than it would be if it doesn't. You know, if you, you know, you think the relationship is going to be is you've set up your meeting, you get to that meeting and it's basically like, okay, I'm here, teach me. Uh, that relationship is going to be very, very short. Invest in yourself first. So if your mentor starts seeing that you are actively engaged in, in advancing yourself personally and professionally, that relationship will be far more stronger. The third thing is you have to be open to honest and constructive feedback. You know, you remember your mentor is your guide. He walks with you or she walks with you on this journey. And sometimes in that journey, you have to be guided in a different direction that you were thinking about going. And in that sometimes comes sometimes very hard and harsh criticism. But if the criticism is honest, instead of rejecting it, rejecting it from the beginning, you may have to ask yourself, maybe this person is right. It's important to have that um, mindset that perhaps what my mentor is telling me is correct. Now, you don't have to agree with everything your mentor says to you. And that's okay. In fact, that's actually expected of you because your mentor will far more admire you and that relationship will be far better. If you have a collegial back and forth, that's expected. That is expected in this mentor-mentee relationship is this collegial back and forth, this collegial back and forth. And the other thing that I want to um, emphasize for you, and this is the next step in how to become a superstar mentee, is complete the tasks given to you. What do I mean by that? During the course of your professional relationship with your mentor, you're going to be given tasks. And these tasks are meant um, not for busy work, far from it. If you're trying to reach a specific goal and your mentor recommends something, maybe recommends a book or recommends a class or recommends a specific resource, come back with that thing completed. Come back with that thing completed. That's an expectation of you as a mentee for this relationship to grow. 
but also, and I say this is very, very important, if your mentor offers a, a contact that is within his or her network to reach out to, to get some more information or to help, help you reach a goal that you're striving for, you must make that a priority. Reach out to that content that your mentor has given to you. That is a goldmine for you. This is so important, especially to grow your professional network, but also so very important in growing and meeting people outside of your network. But it's so very important for your mentor as well because that mentor has opened up his book of contacts for you and offered a resource for you, offered somebody that is within his network or her network to help with your advancement, it is absolutely critical for you to reach out to that person. Absolutely critical. It is a must, and you make, must make that a priority. And finally, and I'll end it with this, is be grateful for the relationship. Be grateful. And don't forget to just say the simple but so very powerful phrase of just thank you. Thanks for taking the time. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else is expected of you other than a simple thank you and gratitude. Because remember, your mentors are doing this uh, out of uh, volunteering of their time. And uh, just a simple thank you goes miles. So just remember to do that. Just make sure to be grateful and say the simple word of, simple phrase of thank you. That's going to really be a nice way to keep building on that relationship that you've been cultivating for the past months, if not years. So with that, my friends, I will thank you and thank you very much for joining this, uh, this community of Medicine Revive. And if you want more information, I've got plenty more resources for you because my goal for you is I want you to learn, grow, and thrive in medicine. And if you want to get started, I have a free three-video series that will get you started. There's going to be a link in the uh, blog post that accompanies this video, but if you uh, have a pen and paper, it is simply medicinerevive.com forward slash start. That's medicinerevive.com forward slash start. And if you want to join a community of like-minded physicians and nurses who are interested in growing in medicine and thriving in medicine, then please consider signing up for the uh, private Medicine Revived Facebook group that I've created. And finally, if you have a question for me to ask on one of these Ask Me Thursday segments, there'll be a link in the uh, show notes that you can ask me one of your questions. It'll send you to that page and you can send me your, send me your questions and I will answer them on further episodes. So until next time, be good to yourself and each other. And if you've enjoyed the podcast, friends, hit that subscribe button and you'll get them twice a week. I do these posts twice a week. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do enjoy it and you're a current subscriber, please make sure you share it with a colleague because that's how we are going to grow. So until next time, be good to yourself and each other. We'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.